Yeah, here we go. Boom! And now, coming to you live from the math department, Precalculus Math 11. That's... That's... Today, section 2.3, the sine law. We know how to do right triangle trigonometry, and we can also do trig with angles in standard position, but what about non-right triangles? For instance, how could you solve the missing sides and angle in this triangle? I mean, the angle is easy enough. You go 180 minus 96 minus 60 for 24 degrees at angle C, but what about the sides? Well, we could drop a perpendicular from point A down to the base side here, side A, and then we could just do trigonometry with this right triangle and trigonometry with this right triangle and then bring things back together at the end once you've solved this length here and this length here then add them together to get the total distance but it seems like a lot of extra working here when we could probably do the same generalization for all non-right triangles so let's consider the case here of triangle ABC, which is really just the two triangles ABD and ACD side by side. Now, on the left, in triangle ABD, we could say that the sine of angle B is H over C. And over here on the right, we could say that the sine of angle C is H over B. Now solving both of these for h, I get h is equal to c times sine b, and here h is equal to b times sine c. Since both of these statements are equal to h, they must equal each other. c sine b equals b sine c. And if I tidy this up a little bit, I can say that c over sine c is equal to b over sine b. And I could do a similar project here where I take a right angle from c over to the opposite side here and look at those two right triangles and get a over sine a involved in this situation as well. What it'll give me is the sine law in either of these two forms for all oblique triangles. So if we go back to the original question, we can solve it now pretty easily. So let's start by doing a over sine a equal to c over sine c. And if we solve now for a, we'll multiply sine 96 to both sides, giving us a is equal to 4 times the sine of 96 degrees over sine of 24. And calculating that, we get 9.8 centimeters. Now let's repeat this process for side B. We'll go with B over sine B equals A over sine A. Or C over sine C, it really doesn't matter. B over sine B equals C over sine C. Then I multiply the sine 60 up in order to solve for B, and the answer is 8.5 centimeters. So we've solved this triangle by finding that angle C is 24 degrees, Side A is 9.8 centimeters, and side B is 8.5 centimeters. Now, when I gave you the sine law in the first case, I gave it in these two different versions. You may be wondering, what's the second one for? Well, I like to use this one when what I'm doing is solving for the angle. Technically, both will work, but it's usually easier to solve if your unknown variable is on the top of the fraction. So here's an example where we would use that. So we've got triangle HAM and the given information about angles A, side A, and side little m. I need to draw this triangle so I can visualize what's going on here. So 
So I can work off this opposite pairing of angle A and side A, and I want to find angle M. So the formula as I'm going to use it will be sine M over little m equals sine A over little a. Putting in what I know, I've got sine m over 6.5 equals sine 119.6 over 21.7. The temptation here would be to calculate the sine of 119.6, but let's leave that alone for right now. Solving for sine m, I've got 6.5 times sine of 119.6 degrees over 21.7. And if I want to solve for angle M, all I need to do is take the inverse sine of this whole amount right here. So now grab your calculator, 6.5 times the sine of 119.6 divided by 21.7. Now this is what the sine of m is equal to, so now we'll take the inverse sine of this answer and get angle m is 15.1 degrees, approximately. In triangle PQR, angle P is 35 degrees, P is 6 centimeters, and Q is 8 centimeters. Sketch and solve the triangle. So here's what that triangle might look like if we were to draw it. But, you know, we've made an assumption here. We've assumed that this side, P, of 6 centimeters is going off to the right and making Q to be an acute angle. And there's not really any need for that. In fact, what if it looked something more like this? We have to consider that Q could be located at either of these two positions where Q is 6 centimeters away from R. It's like there's a circle around R, and wherever it's intersecting on the base is where Q could be located. Do we mean the smaller triangle on the left, or the larger triangle? There's not enough information to say one way or the other, so this is an ambiguous case. The, the ambiguous case. case! And what we have to do is solve both possible triangles. Let's begin with the large triangle. We know side P and angle P. We know side Q. We don't know angle Q. So we'll set up the sine law. This will give us sine Q over 8 equals sine 35 over 6. And Q, therefore, is inverse sine of 8 sine 35 over 6, giving us 49.9 degrees. Now I need to go back in and find angle R. So if we say 180 degrees minus 49.9 minus 35, and we get R is equal to 95.1 degrees. We're now just missing side R, the length of the bottom side of this triangle. So again, we'll set up the sine law using little r on top over sine r and little p over sine p. R over sine 95.1 equals 6 over sine 35. So R, multiplying of course, is equal to 10.4 centimeters. And so I can put that back in on my diagram here. 10.4 centimeters. Well, now we'll go over and we'll solve the smaller triangle had point Q being here like this. I will set up the sine law exactly the same as we did previously. And if I type that in my calculator, I'm going to get 49.9 degrees once again. But in this case, I have to be aware that 49.9 degrees is the reference angle. Q is equal to 180 minus 49.9 degrees giving us angle Q is 130.1 degrees. Now I'll go back in and calculate angle R the same way, subtracting from 180. 180 minus 130.1 minus 35 is 14.9 degrees. Now the only thing left to solve is side little r down on the bottom here, r over sine r, 
is equal to p over sine p. Fill in the values that I know. Sine of 14.9 and p is 6. Sine p is sine of 35. Calculate this, I will get r is equal to 2.7 centimeters. So we've solved both of these triangles. What I usually like to do at the end is just summarize all of this by writing it nicely one time, just like this. And you'll notice that where I listed these three, they all belong to the large version of the triangle, and these three are what we get if we have the small version of the triangle. So you should always list them together like that, so they're lined up, triangle one and triangle two. There's a bit of a cheeky way to do this that you can also go with, which is just to analyze this isosceles triangle here. Because of course, if this is 49.9, then this angle must also be 49.9. Both of these are 6, and so you can calculate the angle over here by doing 180 minus 49.9, and you can get the angle at R by subtracting from 180, or by even subtracting from 95.1. Now once the tears subside on a question like this, the next thing I'm usually asked is, how will we know if there's an ambiguous case? The, the ambiguous, ambiguous case. case! Well, there's a couple of things that have to happen in order for an ambiguous case to even be a possibility. The first depends upon what information we're given. If you were given two angles and a side, there will only be one unique solution. The first thing you do, calculate the third angle, and then go ahead with sine law to calculate the two side lengths. But if you are given two sides and an angle that's opposite from one of those sides, SSA, then one of three things is going to be true. Either there is no triangle and no solution for the given information, or there's one unique triangle with one solution, or the ambiguous case, two distinct triangles with two solutions. But how do we know which one it is? Well, it all comes down to the relationship between the angle and the opposite side that you're given. Let's suppose we have a triangle ABC and we're given the measures of angle A, side B, and side little a. Well, for starters, as you can see here, a has got to be at least as big as the height of the right triangle that would exist if B was located down here. If B was located down here, then the sine of A would be equal to H over B, and H would be equal to B sine A. Well, if A is shorter than that amount, we have no triangle. In the second case, if A is exactly equal to the length of H, the height, we'll have one triangle and it will be a right triangle. Another situation can occur where the length of A is greater than the length of side little b and now we have the large triangle all the way around here. The ambiguous case is going to occur when point B touches down here such that the length of A is less than the length of B, but greater than the length of H. And you can see that here. If we move the point B along this line going away from A, once it gets larger than that length from A to C, there's only one triangle. Coming back, once it's less than B, we have two possible triangles. And right here, when the angle is a right angle, there's only one possible triangle. So the three situations, no triangle, one triangle, or two triangles. And note that if angle A is obtuse, then there is no ambiguity. There can be only one triangle. Well, it's time for me to say goodbye, but before I go, here's two more questions for you to take a look at at home. 
Notice the second one. It just might be an ambiguous case. The, the ambiguous case. case! So until next time, keep your pencils sharp and I'll see you in class! Get out of here! Go! Come on! The, the ambiguous, ambiguous case! case.